Greetings fellow geeks, welcome back to Geeks Like Me. This week we are here at the Nexus to find out more about the game called X-Wing. And as they are having a tournament, what a better place to start. So I've managed to uh, get one of the players, tournament players, from the X-Wing tournament, Frank Milan, to explain to us what X-Wing is, a little bit about it, and yeah, awesome. Frank, thanks again. For, thanks for having me. Okay, Star Wars um, miniatures, X-Wing is a Star Wars miniatures game, okay? We basically have miniatures like this that we maneuver around a, a play surface that we see here below and you will basically maneuver through obstacles that's uh, scattered around the field and then and the, the intent is really around destroying the opponent off the board um, but before I get to the mechanics of the game basically let's start off with that there's factions within the game so when you, you play the game you choose which faction you're going to participate in and you would decide whether you're the Imperial faction, whether you're the Rebel faction, or whether you're the Scum faction. Which, once you've decided which faction you would play, and it's really around what you think is the nicest faction to play around. There's no specific one that you need to choose. Imperial! There we go. Uh, I'm a specific Scum person myself, um, but today I've got some Rebel ships here with me that I'm going to show you. So, what is it? How does it work? It's simple. So, you basically have a, a, a bunch of ships with pilots, and a bunch of upgrade cards. So when you're playing a game, you normally will play a 100 point game. So each opponent has 100 points to build a specific list of ships with upgrades that they will play each other against and try and table them off the table before they obviously kill you. That's really the game. Some of the mechanics that's involved is obviously the ships that we have. Um, we've got the maneuver dials, which we basically dial in what maneuver the ship's gonna do. We have maneuver templates, which will correspond with, so if you look at in this instance, it's a, it's a one straight maneuver, so we would use a one straight template to execute the specific maneuver. So that's in terms of maneuvering the ship, so once you do the one straight, you would basically just fit this little maneuver template in front between the nubs, pick up the ship and place it over it, and that's a specific one maneuver. And the whole game through, you would be planning all your maneuvers with this, so you'd be turning the dial around, picking a specific maneuver, and then once you've picked your maneuver, you would put it flat next to your ship so that your opponent doesn't see. So it's a, it's a secretive decision around where you're going to fly with your ship because they're going to guess where you're going to go as well. So that's the basic mechanics around how the ships maneuver around and how you decide where the ship's going. Okay, so with that, once, once you've done your maneuvering and you've flown, you would basically have an opponent that you would face. The opponent would then have an opportunity to shoot at you. There's a specific sequence that you decide who's shooting first, and it's called the pilot skills, which is on the actual on the ships, but it's also on the actual cards that you have. So there's a whole bunch of information on here, but very, very briefly, it's a pilot skill, which is a pilot skill five in this instance. You've got a pilot name, You've got a ship name, so this is Chewbacca in this instance and his YT-1300. And then it'll briefly tell you about his ability that he has. And then it'll also show you the red circle here on top. Is when you're attacking how many red dice you're going to roll. And then the, the green one here is when you're defending how many green dice you're going to roll. And I'll get to these two sets of dice just now. And then the yellow section here shows how many hull points it is. In other words, it will take, in this instance, 8 damage before it gets destroyed. 
but before you can start destroying a hull, you have to go through shield, which is the blue numbers here at the bottom, and in this instance it's five. So every um, ship will have a range of these pilot cards, which you can go through and choose which pilot you want to have on your ship, and every pilot has a different ability. You will have some generic pilots that has no ability, and they will just fly around using all the other mechanics, excluding actual pilot ability. So I've mentioned around the dice, so here we've got the dice with a whole bunch of different little um, emblems on them. So in this instance right here you've got an eye, which we call a focus, we've got a blank, which means you've rolled nothing and you do nothing, and right here we've got a hit with the hit, which means you, that's where you decide whether you're going to do damage or not, as well as in one instance it's a crit, which is a more severe damage. Okay, those are the different four, four different little icons on the dice. It's an eight-sided dice, so you will roll this based on the red number that I indicated earlier, so you would go like, roll the, the dice, and in this instance it's wow. actually quite a good roll. If you look from the top section, it's two hits and a crit. In that instance, where if you had a defender, the defender would then determine how many green dice they roll, which is the defense dice to determine how many of these hits actually hit. So in the same vein, you will have a focus, and in this instance it's, it's a evade dice, so it's a evade token, that's what this little squiggly thingy means. It's also got a blank section, which means you don't do anything at this point in time. So you would roll it to compare, once your attacker has rolled his attack dice, roll the evade dice, and in this instance, the, the defender has rolled a blank and a focus. And the focus mechanic is quite an interesting one, which I can briefly discuss. Part of when you're flying around is that you've got actions to do. Every ship's got different actions. In this instance specifically, it's, it's actually indicated on these cards right here, that at the bottom you've got a target lock indicator and a focus indicator. In this instance, you can do those two actions only, which is a focus or a target lock. So if the defender did a focus action when they did the action sections, they would then be able to spin the focus to turn this, fo this focus eye into an evade, which then would cancel one of the damage results out. So it will take one of the damage results out, and it would mean that two of the damage results remain, and those damage results will then first reduce the shield values of the opponent, and then the hull value. Once you've removed all the shield and all the hull, the opponent is destroyed and they're removed off of the playing field. And that's, that's really briefly basic, not basic how to on X-Wing. Cool. Um, so I see you have these um, little obstacles. Yes, obstacles. Little obstacles. Um, so what happens if you actually crash into one? Do you take damage? Do you just stop? Yeah, so this, this is a very good question. So we've got two different types of obstacles. One is an asteroid and one is a debris field. In this instance, this is a debris field, but the more common one that people will play with is asteroids and they have an effect. Should you maneuver a ship and the ship lands on any one of the two, they, there's an effect that applies. If it's on an, on an asteroid, you lose your, your ability to shoot that round, which is actually very detrimental. Obviously, mm. you want to take every opportunity to shoot at your opponent. And when you land on a debris like this one specifically here, um, it basically looks like that. Once you land on it, in this instance, where there's another mechanic, it's called a stress mechanic, and you would assign your, your ship a stress token, which will prevent you from actually doing actions. Actions, like you've seen earlier, assist you in modifying your dice. So when you roll a focus like that, focus actions would have needed to be taken to convert that into a hit. And unless you stressed, you can't do fo actions at all. Wow. That's, those are the effects of what these so little obstacles have in the game. So you really got to learn to Manu work your maneuver dials and actually fly through them learn and not to fly. Yes, yeah, exactly. Fly. And and it's quite a it's quite a thing. Initially you'll you'll probably find yourself landing on um, asteroids and debris quite often. Um, but as you practice you actually get to know where ships will finish up and, and eventually they they're just there for your strategic benefit. And w one more thing, um, when you actually firing at another ship, how do you know that you can fire and That's a very good question. Yeah. 
that's it's the so uh, let me let me demonstrate. So when you have two ships on the play area, there's there's a couple of things that you need to look at. So I'm going to remove this ship here to just show you the base of the ship. On the base itself, there's a triangle running across the front section of the ship. At the back section, it's actually got the similar stats that's on the play card, which is how many red dice you roll, how many green dice you roll, how many hit points it can take, and how many shields it's got. And the pilot skill of the actual pilot, and its actions that it can take over there. This little angle here, which is nearly a 90 degree angle, is what we call a firing arc. And you can only shoot out of this firing arc on a normal ship. So to determine whether you're able to shoot at your opponent, one, you have to make sure that you're within the firing arc. And then two, you determine whether you're in range. So when you determine whether you're in range, we use a range ruler. It's got three different sections on it. A range one shot is a very good shot. It means that you're very close into your opponent. And then a range two shot slightly further away. And a range three shot is, is very far away where you actually will give your opponent a defensive bonus. Okay. And that's, that's what, those are the, the couple of small things that you work and to determine whether you can shoot or not. As well as how many dice you will roll when attacking or how many dice your opponent will roll when defending. So when you're up very close and it's within range one, so within this section of the actual range ruler, you would actually normally in this instance, where this pilot would only be allowed to roll two red dice for attacking, because they're so close they will get a bonus one and they'll roll a, th a third one. That's how range one works. And on the converse side, when you're at range three and your, your opponent has is defending, when, when this one, for instance, this ship specifically will only roll one green dice normally, but because it's so far, they will get a bonus if they dice, and the attacker will only roll his normal two. Oh, okay. So it's easier to negate. So you want to try and maneuver close to your opponent you, as possible without absolutely. crashing into him or crashing into an asteroid. Absolutely. So you want to so be as close as possible without your opponent having the ability to shoot back at you. So you do, also don't want to be within their He's firing arc. Okay. And that's, that's how you basically would shoot and kill somebody. And the Imperials, funnily enough, is, is probably the, the guy that's best at what we call arc dodging. Because it's an arc, yeah. you, you basically don't want to be in arc to be shot at, and the Imperials are normally the best faction in terms of arc dodge. Imperials. Imperials. <laughs> okay, cool. And um, like the tournaments, we are currently at the Nexus. I see the, they actually have their name on this board. Um, there's regular tournaments at Nexus. Yeah. Um, if someone wants to come and join it, they sell the stock here. 100%. And yeah. they have regular tournaments. Yeah. So here at Nexus, we, like, uh, like you say, we've actually had a tournament today. Quite fun. They have them regularly here. Um, there's also tournaments around the country. Just, I mean, other, there's, for example, in Centurion, a shop that hosts um, tournaments. We, we actually have a very competitive scene where we've, we actually play regional championships and we play national championships and there's actually a world championships as well. Wow. So there's cool. a very big international community that plays the game as well and it's, and it's quite a competitive environment. Um, but the motto of the game is ultimately fly casual, in other words, have fun. Have fun. That's Obviously, what the game yeah, is it's about. A, it's a game. It's okay. a game. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us once again. If you guys like what we're doing here, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, game on and geek on. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Frank Milan, and I love geeks like me.